um, for everyone involved. And uh, uh, you won't be able to unmute your microphones, um, but do participate in the chat to ask any questions. Um, so that's it. We'll roughly have about a 50 minute chat and around 10 minutes for questions at the end. Um, so without further ado, I guess I'll hand over to Kelvin and he can set the stage for this workshop. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Denise. And uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for, for joining today. And as Denise said, it's, it's great to have so many people uh, enjoying their day today at Beyond IoT 2021. Unfortunately, we'll, we have to do it on a virtual format, but I think, you know, we're all, we're all used to that at, at, at this stage. And hopefully Beyond IoT 2022 will all be, uh, we'll all meet up in, in Cork um, for, for what hopes to be a fantastic event. As Denise said, um, my name is Kelvin Keane. I'm the Microsoft for Startups Program Manager uh, for Ireland, Netherlands and Belgium, working as part of the Microsoft for Startups Western Europe team. I'm joined today by Paul Tobin, who is part of our uh, Microsoft EMEA IoT team. Paul, how's it going today? Yeah, very well. Good to be with you here from London. So thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. Denise, uh, Denise um, gave you a bit of an Irish twang there at the, at the start as a uh, Paul Tobin. So it's uh, <laughs> that, that was that was uh, a good team for the day. Much appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic. So listen, everyone. Today, what what we're going to speak about. Uh, we're going to give you a full overview of the Microsoft for Startups program and really give you an understanding of how we at Microsoft for Startups are working with startups specifically within the IoT sector um, and using IoT to, to scale and grow their businesses. And then Paul is going to come in and give you a really great insight into how Microsoft um, uh, uses its, its Azure Sphere technology to, as I said, really help scale and grow uh, IoT startups and, and IoT scale-ups and IoT businesses going forward. As Denise said, if you have any questions or anything like that, absolutely pop them into the chat. Um, but also we'll have some time at the end that we can uh, we can answer some questions. And as also as Denise said, if we don't get to your questions uh, in this session, you, uh, my my email and Paul's email is is right there, and we're happy to to answer questions afterwards. So let's kick off. So the Microsoft for Startups program, where we position ourselves in the market, is very much as the connector between startups and scale-ups and the overall Microsoft ecosystem. As you see here from this Venn diagram, Microsoft for Startups puts startups in the center of a fantastic ecosystem involving Microsoft, involving <clears throat> our fantastic partners, and ultimately our fantastic customers. And really our value proposition with the Microsoft for Startups program is ultimately scaling and growing startups and scale-ups on our technology to connect them into the and to the enterprise and SMC customers that are ultimately going to help you catapult your business through new customers and, and new revenue. So what do startups need? And, and, and I guess, you know, as uh, I'm not sure, it might be good to, to put into the chat chat bar there of all the attendees uh, today, you know, where are you guys coming from? Are you guys a startup background? Are you scale up background? Um, are you, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be great to hear uh, where you're all coming from. But in the Microsoft for Startups program, we really recognize that startups and scale ups need two things. Okay. And that's access to technology and access to customers. If we can ultimately really drive forward uh, high-end elements of both of those things, we can really uh, help startups get more out of uh, a startup program like ourselves than let's say cloud credits. Um, and this, you know, as I said, this is where our value proposition really lies, that not only do we have the very strong technical support, strong business tools, strong cloud credits, but also that access to customers and really trying to connect you into the people not only within ourselves as, as Microsoft, but maybe within our partners. You know, you will uh, will be speaking with uh, with Arrow later on, a fantastic Microsoft uh, and Microsoft for Startups partner, but also then our, our customers. What are the customers within all of those different industries that you as a as an IoT startup or scale up can potentially tap in and start co-selling with us, start getting into marketplace with us, and ultimately driving those net new customers. 
So what type of startup do we do we support? And this is one that's that that's quite interesting for us because you know the type of startups and scales we support are are deeply rooted in the type of value that we can offer to startups. So we're primarily B2B, you know, 5% of the companies on our on our program are B2B to C, but ultimately, you know, in in this context definitely B2B is our is our uh, is our main um, uh, startup group. The reason for that is we want to, as I said, connect you into our customers. And as a result, the value really lies in you being a B2B startup. Developing a scalable cloud backend is absolutely necessary for us. Whether you're developing hardware already within, uh, within your, your IoT, the, the opportunity for you to start developing a software solution to go with that is absolutely paramount for us. Um, given the fact, you know, we offer series of, of credits we offer a series of of um of business tools and then ultimately we want to be driving SaaS platforms into our marketplace into our enterprise customers that scalable cloud backend is is really really key for us less than seven years old listen this is this is one that uh, is a little bit less important i think for us where we really come in is we want to know that you're at a, a point where you're able to scale rapidly on the cloud now, if that's a if that's a company that's one year old, or if it's a company that that's ten years old, we want to come in at a point whereby you will really get um, some value from us being able to support that that uh, that rapid scale. And then finally, you know, in terms of funding, we do uh, we don't offer any funding ourselves in terms of uh, in terms of monetary funding. So we're looking for startups that are quite well funded between seed and, and, and series B, but also with a very keen eye on either being close or already within the market. Um, and I guess from from there, you know, we can take that solution that you already have and really catapult it onto a global scale. And, and that's really where, you know, access into um, the Microsoft subsidiaries across Europe and across the world, ac access into our fantastic partners who support both from a, a technical and engineering and a commercial aspect, and then access into our customers, which, as I said, we'll, you know, will uh, we'll look to drive new customers into you. So as I said, what are the what are the benefits of being on the Microsoft for Startups program? And I guess you know we kind of we will harp back slightly to the the Venn diagram that I that I showed you right at the start of the session. I guess the the value for us really comes in the fact that you are in the center of an ecosystem that is there to enable you to scale and grow. And as I said, whether that's at a at a Microsoft level, whether that's with a partner, whether that's into our customers, ideally we want to be known as the all round solution, the all round uh, ecosystem that you can that you can uh, really scale your business on but where we really uh, support both from a technical and a commercial side is this from a technical side you know we offer $120,000 of, of Azure credits range of business tools and then very very strong technical support from our Azure tech advisors from our Azure app co uh, con console team and from our fast track program ultimately you know whether you're migrating from another cloud whether you're looking to set yourself up for scale whether you're you know uh, looking to modernize uh, your solution whether you're looking to integrate your solution into one of our other products the technical expertise is there to make sure that you're not doing it by yourself and that is really a, an important point for Microsoft for Startups is that, you know, you are scaling on our technology in conjunction with us. We're not, you know, we're, we're, we're not, uh, we, we don't want you to do it by yourself. We want you to do it in parallel with, uh, with all of the other startups and scale ups on our program. And then from a business and sales uh, acceleration point of view. This is this is really really um, important for us. It's important for us because ultimately, with startups and scale ups, Microsoft views them as as potential partners, partners that could potentially scale their solution to a point where we're into introducing you into our own enterprise and, and and SMC customers. And as a result of that, there's a win 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 scenario. Win for, for you being able to win those enterprise customers, huge win for our, for our enterprise customers getting to uh, getting to to have access to technology that we ourselves at Microsoft know we, we can't do ourselves, you know, and then ultimately uh, for our salespeople and for our account teams who are able who are incentivized to sell your solutions. 
into our into our enterprise and our SMC customers. And this comes really from the fact that we look at getting you into our marketplace, uh, your, your software solution, working with our partners to help you grow your IoT or your hardware solution, and then ultimately trying to drive your go-to-market play uh, once you have developed uh, significantly on our, on our program. And again, you know, by matching the technical and the commercial aspects of our program, we really think that we offer the you know, best in class in terms of helping you scale and grow as, as a business. So what's the journey look like from the time that you start on the program to the time that you graduate? And really, the, the Microsoft for Stars program, it's a, it's a two-year uh, program or when you finish your credits. So as I said, you know, we offer $120,000 of Azure credits on our, on our program. If, you know, you're a, you're, a, you're a solution that is going to be spending, you know, 5K a month, you'll go through the program in two years. If maybe you're a solution that's spending 10K a month, you might go through the program in, in 12 months. It's all really uh, about how long uh, it takes you to, to spend your, your credits, or as I said, up to that, that two year point. But really, you know, what we're looking for you to do is to come onto the program and really hit the ground running, really looking at what potential aspects of the Microsoft ecosystem you can tap into to really start catapulting, catapulting your business forward. You know, so, you know, the, the application pro, uh, process, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about later, is usually quite simple, usually a couple of uh, simple questions. And if you're hitting some of our criteria, we can make a decision on whether it's the right time to bring you onto the program or not. For us, it, it's, it's, it's as much about bringing uh, startups onto a program, onto the program when they'll get value from the program as just bringing them on uh, to, to, give them, to give them credits. So this is a really interesting thing to, to think about that I speak, speak to uh, startups about all the time is if you, brought, if you came onto the program now, would you really be able to get value from the program? Or how about maybe in six months time, you might be a little bit more developed. And as a result, you'll get uh, you know, that six months at the end of, uh, the, end of the two years that uh, might work a little bit more to your favor. But you know, in, the, in the first couple of months, once you've, got, once you've started, started the program, you can immediately activate your credits, immediately activate your business tools, immediately start getting technical support and immediately start getting uh, introductions into our customer base or into our, our partner base. And this is where the, the, um, the value of being able to build your solution uh, you know, within the first couple of months or start building on our technology is so key because then you move into things like publishing in our marketplace, selling into our customers. And as I said, from there, graduating from the program after two years or once your, your, your credits are over, if that's uh, inside that time. And as I said, dedicated commercial resources, dedicated enterprise level technical support is there to help you get there. So really, you know, we've, we've spoken uh, somewhat about the, the technical aspects, you know, whether it's within the Azure Tech Advisors, whether it's in um, App Consult or whether it's in, in Fast Track. But as I said, the real value proposition comes from the commercial resource that we as Microsoft try and uh, bring you through to get to become a Microsoft partner and for us to start co-selling with you. So there's three key uh, channels to market with Microsoft. Direct route, through our, through our partners, or through Microsoft sellers. When I talk about direct, we'll, we'll start off with that. Um, I'm talking about the marketplace, and I'm talking about developing a transactable uh, uh, solution that goes into our marketplace that our enterprise and SMC customers can buy directly from that marketplace. Where this is really, really interesting is enterprise customers that we, that we have that have um, Azure commitments uh, can actually take your solution, implement it in, into, uh, into um, their operations, and that solution basically goes on their Azure commitment, meaning that they can you know, draw down some of the value of that commitment against, uh, against your solution. You know, the marketplace uh, opens you up to a global scale of potential customers, okay? You know, whether you have a sales team in, in Ireland and the UK, the marketplace might, might enable you to tap into customers in South America, maybe tap into some customers in, in mainland Europe, and then maybe looking at the likes of the US and, and Australia. The partner 
the partner motion is also very, very interesting. And you know, this, this, this can come in, in several different forms, whether you're selling your software solution through one of our partners, or maybe even selling uh, your hardware solutions to one of our partners, you know, going uh, and scaling your solution through a partner is basically the exact same way that we as Microsoft sell our, sell our, um, sell our technology. And as a result, you know, it's a fantastic way of building up a partner relationship, but then that exploding into several different um, end customers and routes to market. And finally, the Microsoft sellers. And this we'll, we'll speak about a little bit, a little bit later in the, in the uh, presentation, but the Microsoft sellers are all incentivized to sell your, your solutions into enterprise uh, and SMC customers. Okay, and you know, this is all done through our, our, our international co-sell program, where our sellers can retire the value of a contract of a co-sell deal against their own number. And when I spoke about that win-win-win situation uh, a little bit a little bit earlier, this is really where that comes in, in the fact that, you know, if, a, if an enterprise customer is able to tap into some of the fantastic solutions that we as Microsoft can't, um, can't, can't develop, you know, it offers a huge, a huge, uh, huge opportunity for not only yourselves, but for our sales team. So this comes with the co-sell program. Um, and, you know, this is really where uh, we on the Microsoft for Stars program want to get you towards, towards the end of our program, that you're almost offboarding into either co-sell, into one of our managed teams or into, you know, as, uh, as, um, as Paul will, will speak through a little bit around some of our IoT teams as well. Um, ultimately, having that guided enterprise sales network, that strong uh, alignment with the Microsoft sellers, and also potential to take your solution from maybe a domestic market into international markets is really where the co-sell program is able to um, is able to show its value. Um, and as a result, you know, we, you'll see it from the, uh, the startup kit that I'll have at the end of the, the session and will be sent out to everyone on, on this, uh, this workshop. The co-sell program is really a fantastic, um, uh, a fantastic method of taking, taking your solutions onto an international scale. And again, you know, we talk about connectivity of this program to the wider Microsoft ecosystem. And the reason why I have this slide is just to show you the fact that, uh, just to show you that connection between the Microsoft for Stars program and the IoT element of, of Microsoft and, and where you know we look to connect and where we to look to drive value. So like you're looking at product groups here, startup ecosystem team, industry focused teams, partner and customer ecosystem, which, you know, as Paul will, will speak to a little bit later on, is all, is all something that you as IoT solutions can potentially tap in and, uh, and harness. From a VC perspective, you know, if you're looking at, um, if you're looking at gaining funding, uh, as you look to go through the program, we look to connect you to the VCs across Europe that will help you do that, whether that's moving from a C to Series A or a Series A to Series B. So this is a really interesting slide because what it does is it shows you two, uh, two companies that we'll actually be interviewing a little bit later today, uh, Journey Protector and, and Paxana and Lola from Journey Protector and, uh, and Fergal Diagnan from, from Paxana, two fantastic IoT solutions that we currently have in the Microsoft Startups program. But one thing I want to call out is around the, you know, the value that we're driving from a commercial aspect within our program. In the last two years alone, we've driven over $1 billion in sales pipeline from startups that have graduated from the program. So this really shows that, you know, this isn't lip service around, uh, around the, the commercial opportunity that you could potentially tap into as, uh, as part of the Microsoft for Startups program. This is something that gets really, really tangible results. So Paul, I'll, um, I'll, I'll pass on to you there just to, I guess, talk, uh, talk to us a little bit about that connectivity between, between uh, the cloud and the edge and, and, and the opportunity that Azure Sphere uh, uh, has for, for startups and scale-ups that are on this call. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Kelvin. Really appreciate it. So as uh, Kelvin said at the top, really good to uh, spend this time with you. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of uh, Azure Sphere 
And for anybody not familiar, that's the way we think about connecting the edge or any device that might be part of an all up IoT project, which will ultimately include both the edge and the cloud side of things. And we think it's really relevant both for startups and enterprise customers alike, and those small to medium corporates in the middle. And later in the slides, I'll give you a couple of examples, customer examples that will hopefully help really bring that to life with you. But um, really like to, you know, hopefully educate you around Azure Sphere to get today, think about how you think it might play a role in some of the projects that you're um, working on. And then ultimately, if you think there's um, some follow up, my email's there, happy to kind of work with you guys. And from my side, like I say, I'm on the EMEA IoT team. There's about 80 of us here in the uh, EMEA region, about 200 worldwide. Um, and this slide really that Kelvin will be driving the slides today. So this slide here really kind of just positions how we think about IoT um, projects. So really, you know, what you see on the right hand side there, those images of the devices, and they could be anything um, from a, you know, a, a metering device to a coffee machine, which is the couple of customer case studies I'll give later. Um, and we think about how the intelligent edge, if you like, and there'll always be a degree of compute at the edge, feeds data into the intelligent cloud, in our case, obviously, Azure, to make sense of that data and ultimately drive business insights that allows that customer or partner to take action to start realizing those business benefits, whether it be increased revenue streams, um, optimizing supply chains, or just improving the customer experience. Obviously, using, like I say, the, the compute at the edge of the intelligent edge device range uh, but also the Azure services within the intelligent cloud. And the next slide will take that to the uh, to the next level. So like I say, what you see here on the left is obviously, um, well, kind of originally probably the Windows embedded business, obviously a business that we here at Microsoft have been in for more than 20 years. And like I say, again, it just talks about those intelligent edge devices, whether they be CCTV cameras, scanners, uh, industrial equipment in smart factories, et cetera. And then the range of Microsoft Azure services that you there see on the right hand side from Azure Stream Analytics, IoT Hub, et cetera, which as I spoke about in the previous slide, starts to take that data from the edge that you see on the left and start uh, ingesting that data, making sense of that data and giving customers and partners real insights as to what that data means for their business and their customers' business so they can realize those business benefits. Next slide, please, Gilvin. So the, the edge devices that I want to talk to you about today are what we call MCU devices. Anybody, for anybody not familiar, the microcontroller unit, it's a low cost single chip computer around about the size of your thumbnail. As you can see on the right hand side there, it's kind of uh, within devices that we all touch in our everyday lives on a daily basis. And there's 9 billion of those MCU devices built and deployed every year. So when you think about that as an addressable market, there's a huge business opportunity for, for us, hopefully collectively to go after um, as, a, as a vendor and a partner ecosystem to help deliver some of those benefits to, um, to our, cust our joint customers. And the, 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 the final thing I'll say here on this slide is, of those 9 billion devices that are built and deployed every year, only 1% of them are connected to anybody's cloud today. So again, it just really talks to the fantastic opportunity that we see here within this MCU class of, um, of products and uh, devices that are in the market. Next slide, please come in. So th this slide just kind of, and I'll, I'll kind of talk to this casino here now, you know, when, when you connect a device, there's the opportunity that I kind of intimated to there at the beginning about delivering those business benefits. But the, the truth of the matter is uh, when you connect a device, there's an element of risk that comes with it. And one example that we give is this casino in, in Las Vegas, where they connected a thermometer to check on the quality of the water and therefore the health of the fish. And cyber criminals were ultimately in, uh, able to exploit that connected thermometer, um, get into and exploit other vulnerabilities in with the network, and then ultimately ended up with access to the high roller database. So as you can imagine, if you're the CIO, CEO, or just involved with that company at all, that's um, you know a major, major problem. So connecting devices is great, 
but we believe you need to really think about doing that in a secure way. And the next slide, please, Kelvin. And obviously, as you might have expected, our introduction as to how we go about doing that is with Azure Sphere. So Azure Sphere, the, these are the seven properties of what we believe to be highly secured devices. And these are the seven properties that Azure Sphere meets. I won't go into any of these in any detail. You'll see a URL there at the bottom that's a white paper that you know you can take a look at and it goes into these in in um, in a lot of detail. But I'll just pick out a couple. So certificate-based authentication, um, that's what Azure Sphere uses. And in simple terms, that just means that we don't use passwords, which is frequently the um, the way that these things are hacked. So it's not a, a certificate-based authentication system. Oh, sorry, it is certificate-based, so we don't use passwords. Um, and then the point on the end there, renewable security. Again, I'll come on to it in the next slide, but we have Azure, um, Azure Sphere service, which is constantly monitoring all those devices on the edge point, looking out for additional vulnerabilities, updating those devices to make sure that they uh, remain secure. And like I say, there's a white paper there that can, um, you know, talk to each of these seven in a lot more detail. So if we go to the next slide, please, Kelvin. So what, what is Azure Sphere? It's, um, it's an end-to-end -end security solution for, for securing those MCU devices that we talked about. And it's really made up of three components. On the left-hand side here, as we look, it's uh, the Azure Sphere certified MCUs. So we're working with a number of, of silicon providers. Uh, today, we have the MediaTek chip uh, on the market. We have others coming as well, but we have a security built in at a silicon level. Then if you go up to the top right, you look at, you see the Azure Sphere OS, uh, which is a stripped down Linux, um, and it's a Microsoft secured software platform. So again, security built in at not only the silicon, but also the OS level. And then the third and final component of Azure Sphere, and it, you know, it does come as a, as a three-way solution, if you like, is the Azure Sphere security service. And this brokers trust and detects any emerging threats and renews those devices on a 24 by 7, 365 basis. And that, to, to, to me anyway, is, is the magic really of Azure Sphere. If you think about the cost to a partner or customer, uh, if they had to stand up that kind of um, Azure Sphere security system independently, it would be huge. You know, and Microsoft take care of all of that for you um, for you know, that, that's uh, beyond 2030. So a huge commitment from Microsoft there to make sure that we have via Azure Sphere, um, not only the, the silicon secured and the OS, but this Azure Sphere security service that's constantly monitoring those devices. Next slide, please, Gilman. So a couple of customer examples here. We'll start with Starbucks, obviously a, a globally recognized brand that you're probably all familiar with. Um, so the first thing here might be to think, why, why did Starbucks want to connect up their coffee machines in the first place, let alone then make sure they're doing it securely with Azure Sphere? And number one was uh, to deliver what they call the perfect pour. And what that really means is they wanted to be able to get telemetry off these coffee machines in real time and be able to monitor things like the temperature of the water and the blend of the beans to make sure they were delivering the customer experience that they wanted to. So obviously we were able to talk to them about how that could be done over the air. The, the second and probably most pertinent was around cost savings and reducing what they call unnecessary truck rolls. So what was frequently happening here was um, uh, the barista would ring up Starbucks and say, look, the coffee machine's not working. Starbucks would send out an engineer and 30% of the time, it wasn't actually an engineering issue at all. It was a cleaning issue or the coffee machine hadn't been turned on. So even for the, uh, a, a company the size of somebody like Starbucks, when you start having you know, many, many of those kind of wasted engineering visits, it has a serious impact on the P&L um, of an account uh, or a customer that big. So they, again, they wanted to be able to connect these machines up, get those telemetry and be able to do predictive maintenance on these coffee machines. So for example, two weeks before a particular coffee machine was gonna go down uh, because of that predictive maintenance model that they had and the telemetry, they'd be able to spot what component part was gonna go, send an engineer out ahead of time, make sure it's a first time fix 
and therefore there was a zero downtime uh, within the stores themselves. And then finally, the operational efficiencies here. So Starbucks were historically, when they would frequently change their recipes, uh, they would be sending people out with USB sticks to, to plug into those machines and um, download those recipes. Whereas again, if we can connect these up over the air, then obviously it gives them a chance to do that remotely and not have, you know, to save significant costs um, in doing it how they had been previously. So the, the last thing I'll say here on the Starbucks case study, um, which we're deploying right now, is um, one thing just to bear in mind with Azure Sphere is the original conversation with Starbucks, you know, was very positive. They got it. They understood the value proposition. And then they said, look, the OEM that manufacture these coffee machines, they're the people that you need to make sure that are building Azure Sphere into those devices. So we're absolutely doing that today. And you'll see that. Um, being deployed in the next 12 to 18 months. But in the meantime, we said, look, we actually have a retrofit or what we call a brownfield option for Azure Sphere as well. So as well as building it into the machine, you also have an option for existing inventory like the coffee machines you see there in the image where you could fit a retro device, which is a small device around about the size of your um, power pack on your laptop, which would give you all the goodness of Azure Sphere, be, enable you to connect up these coffee machines, um, realize all those biz business benefits that we spoke about in today's market while we're building Azure Sphere into these products at point of manufacture for the next 12 to 18 months. So that's the deployment method in the short term that will go with Starbucks, what we call the Guardian devices or retrofit devices. And then we'll build it sphere into the devices as we move forward. So next slide. So this is uh, another example of um, you know, as a, a smaller company, if you like, that build water meters. And this is what we call a greenfield implementation of Azure Sphere. And all that means is Starbucks was the retrofit or brownfield. This is the greenfield, i.e. Azure Sphere is built into the meter at point of manufacture. And that's the, the meter there, there that you see in an image. At a high level, the value proposition around this solution is for the consumer. It will auto detect and shut off leaks in your house. And you can think about how the benefits of lower house insurance, et cetera, as well as just the inconvenience of um, having a big water leak. It will give you visibility of the water usage um, across your household. So you'll see there on the bottom left, um, an application that starts gamifying that experience as well and encourages you to use less water. Um, and, you know, for example, it will maybe encourage you to take a shower rather than the bath. And then ultimately the, you know, really important business uh, or benefit for the consumer, should I say, is when we've seen live trials here in the UK, it reduces um, the bills by about 30% as people just become more aware of, you know, how they're using water. Um, and then for the water companies, one, it obviously gives them better access to billing information, which is really important for them because right now, um, in certain areas of the UK, they're still having to send people out to shine torches down holes, um, to take uh, physical meter readings. Whereas with this water meter, because it will resi reside in the consumer's home, it accesses that billing information much easier via Wi-Fi or narrowband IoT as a fallback. It also gives them leak detection. And again, you'll see the dashboards there in the bottom right. And for them, the leak detection is obviously less about in the consumer home, and it's more about their network infrastructure. So again, the statistic here in the UK is of all the water that's generated, 24% of it is lost in leaks. Um, and they just don't know where those leaks are. And even for a, a pretty wet country uh, like the UK, as I look out at a, a load of snow, uh, that's a major issue for these guys, for these water companies. So they need to be able to pinpoint where these uh, leaks are and make sure that they can, uh, can fix them. And then it, you, know, you can see the dashboard there that can be measuring pressure um, across the network. And for the water companies who ultimately pay for these meters to be deployed, the real driver for them is if we all carry on using water at the rate we're currently using water, then six of the major cities across the world in the next 10 to 15 years will have what's termed a no water day, i.e. as consumers will turn on the water and there just won't be any there. So we need to start treating water like the precious uh, resource that it is. 
Otherwise, these water companies are going to have to spend millions of dollars on desalination plants and reservoir infrastructure. Um, and it also, again, via this app for the water companies, it starts to give them some customer engagement, um, you know, so that you could maybe imagine how they might monetize that over time. But right now, for them, it's, you know, very much a case of consumers pay the bill and never think about them. And there isn't really no relationship. Whereas, again, once we've built this app out and they start having that ability to talk to those consumers, then it gives them a chance to enhance the customer experience and potentially monetize in different ways over time. So this is, like I say, a greenfield implementation um, and the Starbucks one was the brownfield. So sorry, Kelvin. Yeah, go ahead. So. Just kind of when you're thinking about maybe the uh, the devices that you might be building yourselves, or if you're a more cloud or services oriented customer, the device uh, partner, should I say, the devices that might be involved in your IoT project, um, then these are the kind of things that you need to be thinking about uh, if you wanted to think whether or not Azure Sphere was was a fit for the projects you're working on. Uh, the fact that we can do greenfield, I build in at point of manufacture or brownfield retrofit just be uh, aware that both options are available. Um, understanding the use case we think is really important. Uh, you know, the Starbucks example I gave, once you understand that the benefits of predictive maintenance, then it has a very, you know, for them specific um, uh, value on their P&L. And that makes it very, very uh, pertinent to the C-level suite, for example, in Starbucks, where we were able to talk about a monetary value on what we could save them if we were able to get that predictive uh, maintenance model correct. Uh, making sort of security is a priority. You know, the, the Las Vegas casino story that I, I spoke to, um, in our view, everything you, you um, connect needs to be secure. But uh, hopefully, like I say, that, that um, fish uh, tank story gives you an idea as to the kind of things that can happen even in innocent um, connected things if you're not careful. Uh, right now we have Wi-Fi and Ethernet connectivity available. We also have a multi-chip solution that can bring cellular but right now in terms of uh, what's available then it's Wi-Fi and Ethernet. So just think about that in the different environments you might be working on. And then ideally there'd be a, a stable power supply. Um, we see a couple of things like with the water meter, battery as a backup, but ideal scenarios for Azure Sphere tend to be ones where we have that um, plugged in or stable power supply available. Next slide, please go on. So then what, what could the Microsoft partnership look like if you, if you did think that Azure Sphere is something that you would like to explore and you'd like to get a little bit deeper, then the partnership with Microsoft obviously um, could you know, come in many forms. But how I like to think about it is we have a huge ecosystem of partners um, out there. So even if you don't have a particular area of expertise in, it might be hardware design, it might be manufacturing or whatever it might be, or software integration, firmware, et cetera, chances are we have somebody within our ecosystem that could absolutely help you. So if you did want to make us aware of a particular project, look at how we might implement Azure Sphere, then chances are we could work alongside you to, to bring people in from our ecosystem to help make that easier for you and ultimately our joint customers. So we'd love to, uh, we'd love to talk to you there. And then finally, I think my next slide just talks, Kelvin, to the um, the partnership and what it could tangibly look like um, from, from your side of things. So number one thing I'd say is um, we'd be willing to have joint customer calls with you. If you think there's a, an opportunity like a Starbucks, like the water meter or whatever it might be, where you think it, it, there'd be value in us as Microsoft coming on the call with you to explain Azure Sphere explain why we think securing those edge points is vitally important, then we'd be absolutely happy to do that. Um, and again, we have uh, a number of partners that are, we've also trained and they could help too. Uh, there is potential for investments um, and those investments can come in many forms, whether that be technical resource. We have a, a number of technical specialists across the globe, but also here in the EMEA region, where if you you or your customer needed to get into the next level of detail um, on the technical side, then we can help you there. There is obviously the, the financial investments as well. If you think um, 
and it, it is potential. So I would just call out that, that word there. It's not a given. But if you think um, there's a strong business case and we could jointly build that together and you need an investment to move a customer opportunity from talking about it to starting to deploy Azure Sphere, then again, we'd be happy to have that conversation and see if that's something that we could help with. A uh, high level, how we think about that as a return on investment is how many Azure Sphere units do we think that opportunity represents over three years and how much Azure services do you think could be generated with that deployment over three years? But like I say, we can get into that a level of detail um, if you think you do have some opportunities. And then the final point here, uh, just before I wrap up and hand back to Kelvin is around what we call the co-sell motion and Kelvin spoke about this in his session as well. So, you know, how you can think about that in, in, in very simple terms is um, if you have a solution that obviously has Azure Sphere at the edge, our technology at the edge and Azure in the cloud, then you know, we, we can effectively go to our sellers within Microsoft and they could become a, an extension of your sales force. If obviously, again, the, you know, the business case and how that addresses their customer needs um, is, is strong. Like in the water meter case, we now have our water utility team here in the UK helping that partner go and have water utility um, conversations with those customers. And we're really harnessing, you know, the relationship that we have with Microsoft, with the fantastic technology that the partner has built and come up with. And we're trying to make sure that we can partner together deliver those business benefits to the customer and everybody sees the value. So it is really, really, you know, very much a, a true partnership. So hopefully that's given you a, a kind of high level overview of Azure Sphere. I'd be happy to um, yeah, follow up with any of you that um, might have additional questions or if you wanted to explore it a little further. But uh, as Kelvin you know, said right at the top, whether it be access to the technology or access potentially with the co-sell uh, motion to customers, I, hopefully it's kind of pretty clear that how Microsoft could play a role to help you. So with that, Kelvin, I'll hand back to you. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Paul. And, uh, and uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully from today's session, you know, everyone will have have got a, a real understanding of the value of the of the overall partnership, I guess, with the Microsoft ecosystem. You know, we've, we've touched upon Microsoft and startups today, we've touched upon Azure Sphere, I guess, you know, Paul did the slide that you just showed there around the different um, partners and the different areas that those partners are, are really offering their expertise um, to, to people within the Microsoft ecosystem is, you know, is of huge value, you know, whether you're a startup, a scale up or, or more, or, or more of an established company, um, you know, that, as, that aspect of being able to find someone or a partner to potentially help you from, you know, a, a technical aspect, commercial aspect, an engineering aspect, a, a hardware or software um, on the edge in the cloud, whatever it may be, it really, you know, brings home to roost the um, the, the, the value of that partnership. Um, and I guess, you know, just just a few things that I want to touch upon just before we we hand over for questions. Um, you know, as, as Paul said, and as, as I said at the, the start of the, the, the session today, you know, we're absolutely looking to hear about your solutions. We're looking to hear about how we as Microsoft can potentially help you scale and grow. So if you're if you're interested in the Microsoft for Startups program or Azure Sphere, have a get in contact with me uh, at the at the email address um, listed there. I'd be happy to, to speak with you about whether you know the Microsoft for Startups program is the best option for you, whether it's one of our IoT teams might be the better option for you and then you know have potentially a, a conversation about Azure Sphere might be facilitated as well um, and I guess you know it's uh, it'll be about connecting you to the right people within Microsoft to help you help you uh, you kick off that relationship if you don't already have one um, uh, something here that would be will be great for you all to visit um, when these uh, these slides get sent around is the Microsoft Startup Startup Kit. So this basically is, you know, a, a, almost a larger uh, overview of, of the overview that we've given you today, giving you some insights into what the program entails. 
some fantastic decks around the Azure Tech Advisors, about the App Consult, uh, and the Fast Track program, which really, you know, can uh, go into a significant amount of detail around the technical uh, support that's available under the Microsoft for Startups program. And then there's also some fast, fantastic decks in there about the uh, the marketplace, about our partner to partner motion, and also about our, our co-sell motion, which myself and Paul have talked talked about briefly. Briefly, and you know the co-sell is really a, you know the the area that um, we look to to see our value proposition come in, giving you that that uh, that potential. Um, uh, potential connections into a global uh, global stage using um, our our uh, extended sales force that, that you guys can tap into. Um, and then finally, the Microsoft for Startups calendar of activity is a fantastic resource to use. Um, you know, we always have events, activities, uh, resources that are startups not only in program, but also startups that we have relationships with through our to our different partners um, are constantly tapping into. And I guess, you know, what would be great to call out in, in, uh, in, in from that link is that there's a huge amount that you can either be planning to to, to get involved in uh, as a participant, but also you know if you feel like you you could potentially offer some um, uh, some uh, some expertise as a as a. Uh, uh, an expert speaker or, or you'd like to actually get involved in maybe a panel or, or a session again we'd absolutely love to hear from you we have a couple of uh, big um, big events coming up in in march and april time i'd look out for uh, ready set scale happening in april which will be a full week of events uh and i guess if you're if you're interested in maybe speaking at that maybe uh, drop me a, a, an email on on the email shown and we we'd love to potentially facilitate that but listen, all I can say really is thanks so much for your for your time today, and thanks so much for for coming along and uh, and um, you know trying to get some insights from myself and Paul today. Um, we hope that you'll enjoy the rest of the Beyond IoT conference. A few call outs to make. I'll be um, on the on uh, a workshop at quarter past twelve with uh, Danny Jennings of Arrow talking about the fantastic partnership that uh, Microsoft for Startups and Arrow have have been uh, growing over over 2020 and then if you can if you can hack any more of me I'll be uh, on uh, on the workshop stage as well uh, from I think half one to half two or it could be half 12 to half one I, I'm, I'm currently on uh, CET time but if you want to hear about some of the fantastic IOT solutions that Microsoft for Startups currently has in our program I'm interviewing Anne Lawler from Journey Protector Fergal Dignan from Paxana and Dr. Fiona Edwards Murphy um, of Apis Protect. Just getting a little bit of insight into how they've grown their fantastic businesses and also how they're building partnerships, how they're winning customers and their big plans for 2021. So if you're if you're interested in uh, in hearing about some of those solutions, absolutely pop over to that workshop uh, in about uh, an hour and a half's time. Um, but listen, we'll uh, we'll open up the, the floor to, to questions. And um, as I said, any questions that we don't get to, we can uh, we can absolutely get them at um, at that email. Okay, thanks, Kelvin, and thanks, Danny. Um, so there's just a couple of questions in the chat. So I'll ask them. The first is from uh, Julia. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, but. Uh, it said, uh, perhaps um, this is a stupid question, but I have a startup company and I was inquiring uh, a few startup programs a while ago. I came across the Microsoft one and I could not understand how the application process works. Apparently the startup must be presented to the Microsoft team. Is it not possible to sign up through the website? Is that correct? And her source of information was just startup.microsoft.com. So maybe, is that something just maybe a technical how to yeah uh, absolutely i i can uh, i can i can take that so um listen that we don't actually have any application uh, on our website anymore uh, usually where um startups come through into our into our application process is through partners that we have so the likes of arrow um our, our vc partners uh, enterprise ireland if you've uh, if you've got some element of funding through Enterprise Ireland, we usually fast track those startups directly into our into our program. But um, 
if you're if you're looking to apply as well, you can get in contact with myself and we can have a discussion because Microsoft for stars, uh, Microsoft employees can also make uh, can also make applications. But I think as 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 well, if you are a startup who is working with Enterprise Ireland, uh, Enterprise Ireland have a referral code that can put you into the program as well. So there are two two different routes that you can go down. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, we don't have uh, the uh, we don't have the application on our website at the moment. Um, but uh, but we usually just recruit through partners. Enterprise Ireland probably being the, the easiest one to go through. Or if you're working with the likes of Arrow, maybe they uh, they can uh, refer you as well. Um, okay, great. And we have another question from Manuel, and he asks, um, where do you think the security has to be paid most attention to? Is it on the edge, the cloud, or in the chip itself, um, with some sort of Microsoft certification? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. I, I guess the, the simple answer is, uh, unfortunately, across all of those, <laughs> I, I, you know, the cyber criminals out there, you know, they'll exploit any, any vulnerability they can find, whether it be on the edge or, or in the cloud. So um, I think we, you know, to, to protect our own IP, our partners and our customers, we really do need to look at it from an edge to cloud perspective. Um, obviously, I've been in this uh, here at Microsoft, 14 years. So, if you know if, if there's particular scenarios you're thinking about, um, Manuel, feel free to through my email, Kelvin's email, paint that picture. I'd be happy to give my view as to what I've seen over time here, um, and obviously, you know, working with the, the wider team as well, just to give you you some um, feedback as to whether or not we think you know, or or where we where we should index most around the security of any particular. IoT solution, but in simple terms, the answer is we absolutely need to secure the edge, and we need to secure the cloud. Like I say, the um, the example I gave around the Las Vegas uh, Las Vegas casino probably talks to that you know better than most. So um, yeah, unfortunately, we need to make sure it's a robust robust solution from beginning to end. Um, very good. I think I had a question and I guess it's like, I know we're all sick of hearing about COVID-19, but I know that from um, even like personal experience in, there's been a lot more like attempts when you look at things like getting malicious text messages and stuff and looking uh, to, to try and hack your bank accounts and stuff. Has it the same been seen in this kind of IOT area? Um, is there a real increase in, say, cyber attacks over the past couple of months? Um, just people taking advantage of that kind of global pandemic and the general sense of unease in the world. I, I guess it's always always been there, um, but certainly, yeah, scamming on that level, like you said, text messages. We've certainly certainly seen that heightened, um, and then in relate relation directly to COVID nineteen, for example. You know, we're working with a number of medical authorities um, here across EMEA um, to to build our technology at the edge and in the cloud um, into, for example, COVID testing machines that give real time um, um, uh, results and things. So if you think about the application of our technology, it can really be across any you know, within reason, any use case you can think of, you know, water meters we spoke about today, coffee machines, COVID testing machines, you name it. If you're connecting a device, um, you know, chances are it's worth having a conversation with us about how we secure that edge point together. And then ho hopefully, you know, again, if, if you roll all the way back to the beginning of my presentation, how we also look at how we secure the edge, how we get the right Azure services so that, you know, the, re the very reason for connecting these devices in the first place is to drive that data into Azure to start making business sense of that data to deliver real life business outcomes um, like the predictive maintenance, like the saving on the truck rolls that I spoke about at Starbucks. So um, yeah, I, I guess that's part of the excitement and the reason why I love working in the I IoT team here so much at Microsoft is because, um, you know, every day is different. There's a different use case every day. So, um, yeah, really exciting part of the business. But we'd be only too happy to look at any use cases that uh, the group here might be working on. Yeah, I don't know if this is the last chance if anyone has any questions. Um, otherwise, 
we can allow people to grab a cup of coffee before the next workshop starts. Um, I know as part of um, this workshop two series session, we the next session is Microsoft and Arrow, um, which is how Microsoft and Arrow Electronics combine their skill sets to take innovations from design to production and scale. And I know you have some really interesting um, CEOs as part of that as well. Um, so if that's it from everyone, we'll we'll just say thanks to the guys for like a really interesting talk here. And I hope everyone is enjoying the day. Um, you can go back to the research stage. The main stage is still going. There's a lot of other workshops. I think there's something like 27 in total. Um, so there is a lot going on, but definitely uh, workshop 2.2 will be starting in uh, about 15 minutes or so. Uh, at least it'll be opening then. So we love to see you there again. And thanks again to Kelvin and Paul um, for um, a great session and hope to see you soon. Thanks very much. Thank thanks you. So much. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.